By the end of this tutorial, you'll have learned to key out green screen and also replace any screen using Blender. Like always, if you want to work along with us, I have everything I use down below. So inside Blender, the first thing we have to do is actually track our screen. So let's go up to plus, VFX, and motion tracking, and then open up our footage. Quick note, I did convert my footage to a PNG sequence just so it's a little bit easier to work with. So let's hit A, select all these, open the clip, and then set the scene frames and prefetch our footage. One quick thing to note about this footage is that there's actually a mistake in here. She actually uses her finger and moves the green screen a little bit on the phone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of end before that. Of course, if you are kind of filming yourself with the green screen footage on the phone, you don't want to touch the phone screen at all because we don't want that green kind of box to move since we're actually going to be using that for the track. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Also, let's go ahead and change some settings around. So I'm going to come up to uh, the output settings. Let's go ahead and set up our render property. So 4096 by 2160 um, is my resolution. And then the frame rate, I believe, is 25. So we're just going to set both of those things. And then let's come to the render properties, go down to color management, and change it from filmic to standard just to get the correct color space. Okay, so now let's track our footage. I'm going to come to the first clip. Let's do a pattern size of a 40 and then a search size of 130. I just found with testing that kind of works the best. If I go ahead and control click, put that down and then Alt S to reveal the search area, you can see that this is kind of uh, how big I need it for my scene. Let's just go ahead and delete that. I want to go ahead and match the previous frame and normalize, and then we can just leave the tracking settings extra alone for this tutorial. Uh, these are kind of just settings I played around with and uh, work best for my scene. Let's control click all of the corners to actually get our planar track, since a planar track needs uh, basically four corners throughout the clip um, to have that, whereas you know motion tracking actually needs eight throughout the entire clip. So once we have all those selected on the corners, I'm just going to control T to track those four. It should make it all the way to the end of your footage. And so now we can actually go ahead and solve and get a planar track. So I'm going to come up here to the solve button. I'm going to hit a plane track up here and create a new plane track. And then what I want to do is this box appears. This is basically where the screen is going to be. So let's go ahead and place this uh, point right here first. So I'm just going to place that kind of here. And what I want to do is basically place it outside of our green area. Because if we actually place it like in here, when we actually composite it, there might be a little bit of green spill out there. And so we just want to try to get rid of that as much as possible. So I'm just going to pull that out here and do the same for all the other corners. Just trying to keep the same kind of distance between them. So like right there. And then let's do the other two points up here. Just dragging that roughly there and right there and so now if we uh, go ahead and play our footage you'll notice that the planar track is actually moving throughout you know the screen and it's looking very accurate and so that is how we get that planar track now we're actually ready for compositing so let's go up to the compositing tab we're going to hit use nodes we don't need the render layers since that's actually with the layout section and we're not going to be dealing uh, anything in here so compositing and let's just delete that render layers add a movie clip because of course we need to import in our uh, footage again so there it is automatically in our project and then if we have the node wrangler add-on first of all edit preferences add-ons and then it comes default with blender so you just want to enable the node wrangler add-on uh, and then when you have that shift control click and we can view the image and then just hit v to kind of zoom out and so what i want to do is let's go ahead and just combine the two so i'm going to go ahead and shift a I'm going to add a image and now I linked down the uh, the image that I used. Of course, you can use kind of any uh, 16 by 9 image uh, that you want to actually place on your phone. So this is kind of where you can get a little bit creative. So I'm going to go ahead and open. We're going to go uh, search for that image. So here's my image. I'm just going to click that and open that up. And then, of course, we need to do a alpha over to combine the two. So alpha over, select that. And then we're going to place the movie clip on top and the image on the bottom. And let's just view what that's doing. So now that we have uh, this, we can see that the image is actually not projected to the actual phone screen. And so that's where the planar track comes into play. So what I'm going to do is shift A, add a plane track to form node. And then if we place that here, you'll notice that it's disappeared. And that's actually because we haven't imported anything in. So we need, of course, select our footage. And then we need to select the camera object and the plane track down here. And now you can see that our plane track is actually tracking to the actual phone now. And so that looks pretty bad. So we need to go ahead and play around with some settings to composite that a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and I want to get out her uh, finger. And if you view the clip, you can see that we actually have uh, this green, uh, green screen. And so what we need to do, of course, is to key out the green. We're going to shift A, add a keying node right here. And just going to place that there, image into the image down here. 
and then let me scribble this down and then if we view the image we can see that it's automatically doing some things and that's actually because it's set to white what i'm going to do is hit m to mute the node and then if i select this color uh, wheel down here and then this uh kind of picker i'm going to pick the green screen color and then now if we hit m to unmute it we can see it's basically doing that we want to go ahead and go into the matte section just so we can view kind of the black and white map let's alt v just to zoom in a little bit and you can see there's some gray areas uh, and you know some gray areas on the actual phone so to get rid of that we actually need to play around with the clip black and the clip white so i'm just going to move those in and try to crush all those numbers we don't want to do it too too much you know we want to have a wide enough gap to where this is all black uh, just because you know some of the finger detail might be lost and we don't want that so let's go ahead and uh, with this selected we now need to basically combine that uh, with our alpha over node to just remove the finger so if i plug this mat into the factor of our alpha over you can see that it's basically doing the opposite effect that we want it's only being projected on the finger so of course to get rid of that we're going to shift a add a invert node and we're just going to plug that right there and then that has inverted it and everything uh, you will notice that we have a you know some green spillage and stuff so that's where you can come back in i might dilate the um the actual key a little bit just to get rid of some of that and then if you also want to you know go ahead and blur it a little bit we can also do that so i'm going to add a blur node place that right here make that fast gaussian just so it's a little bit faster then uh i'm not going to do too much blur since i don't really want this to uh be affected but it's going to help kind of get rid of some of that kind of edge uh right there that harsh edge so i'm going to just do a one uh pixel blur and hopefully that should kind of you know smooth things out right there um, and now that is looking much better. Of course, I still do want to try to composite this in a little bit more because you'll notice it's very sharp right now. And like the image is very in focus. So if you see her finger, it's actually a little bit out of focus. And so we need to copy that as much as possible. I'm going to shift a, add a blur node again, but instead we're going to plug it up to the image up here. And then I'm just going to do again, fast Gaussian. Let's try a four pixel blur. Okay. So you can see that's helped a little bit kind of blend that in. And so the last thing I want to do is try to match the colors a little bit just because uh, in real life this really wouldn't be as bright. And so I'm just going to bring this kind of node out here. Shift A, add a color balance node. I like that the best. But of course you can use other nodes. Like I think there is a curves, uh, RGB curves uh, that you can also use. But I like uh, the color balance node a little bit more. Um, so let's just, you know, maybe decrease, uh, decrease the gamma a little bit. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's also decrease the gain just a tad. Okay, so you can see that's darkened it a lot more. Um, now, what I do notice is that we're kind of getting this uh, green kind of line right here. And again, that goes back to our planar track. So I want to get that out. And so now what I want to do is I basically want to get this footage and I want to color correct this uh, using our kind of key mat that we have. So let's go ahead, shift A. I'm going to add another color balance node. So right there, I'm just going to place it in the stream that's going into our alpha over because we do want to color correct uh, just this. And if I did color correct this now, it will affect the entire image. So of course, we have to take our inverted alpha that we have from our uh, keying node and place that into the factor of our color balance node. And then with that, we can actually view that. And let's uh, try to decrease the gamma just a little bit, see what that does. Uh, so you can see that's basically making the green a little bit darker. So let's just decrease it a little bit more. Uh, so it's a darker green color now. Um, we do want to watch out and make sure it's not really affecting kind of, you know, the, uh, you know, edge of her thumb right there. So let's go ahead and go to the alpha over and just make sure that it's not really having this like black outline to it because we don't really want that. Uh, and as you can see, because of our dilation and everything, it's not really showing. So that's pretty good. And now we actually have uh, the kind of green line kind of dissipated of course you can play around with some of the other kind of settings with this and really get that green line out um, and that's kind of the workflow to do that so now we're ready to render out a final image so let's plug the image into the composite and then come over to the property since this is going to render out so fast for me i'm not going to bother rendering this out as a image sequence uh, however of course if it does render out for a long time for you uh, you just want to save it as a image sequence because if blender crashes it'll lose all your progress um, so I'm going to come over here, uh, save it in whatever kind of location you want to save it as. Um, I'm going to render it as a FFmpeg video encoding. I'm going to set it to QuickTime and then set the output quality to high. This is kind of just the settings that I like to uh, kind of upload. Since I'm using uh, YouTube and stuff, uh, H.264 is totally fine for, you know, the type of quality I need. Um, so let's go ahead and save the project. And so now that everything is in the correct settings, let's go ahead and render the animation. 
Okay, so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Hopefully you guys got something similar and understood kind of the workflow of planner tracking and also keying out the green screen. It would mean a lot to me if you guys consider liking and subscribing to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.